Hello everyone, it's another great day of learning. My name is Teacher Pao, your grade 10 arts teacher. Join me in exploring a world full of colors, patterns, and creativity. Let's all create art from the heart. Now, before we begin with our lesson, let's try to analyze an artwork created by the famous artist Vincent van Gogh. I'm sure you've heard of that name before. His paintings and drawings include some of the world's most popular and most expensive pieces. But even though his works are considered as classic, they are also used as reference in pop culture a lot of times. Take a look at this painting over here. This is the artwork that we will analyze. I'm sure you have seen this artwork before. On a t-shirt maybe? On a mural? On a bag? Basically, we see this everywhere. But do you know the title? Yes, it's Starry Night by none other than Vincent van Gogh. Let's start analyzing this iconic artwork. You can write down your answers on your notebook or just simply state your answers as I ask the questions. Let's begin with a description of this artwork. What are the things that you see in the artwork? Describe each of those things. Now on to interpretation. What do you think Van Gogh wanted to imply in his artwork? Is the title Starry Night appropriate for the image? Why do you think so? For analysis based on your prior knowledge from the past grade levels, what do you think are the elements of art used in this artwork? Last one is judgment. Is this piece of artwork worthy of appreciation? Why or why not? Now, there is no right or wrong answers here. I'm sure you've given a lot of interesting observations on the starry night. Good job, everyone! The word design indicates both the process of organizing visual elements and the product of that process. It is a result of our basic need for meaningful order. Some designs are so well integrated that they have qualities beyond a mere sum of their parts. Such are said to be beautiful, interesting, absorbing, or surprising. Art and beauty can be expressed in many ways. In natural beauty of huge old trees, or in the created beauty of a painting of those trees, like in the case of Van Gogh's large plain trees. Depicted in his paintings are the principles of design that made his work beautiful, fascinating, and expressive. So what are these principles of design? We have six of them. Unity and variety, balance, Emphasis in subordination, contrast, repetition and rhythm, and scale and proportion. Let's discuss the first principle of design, unity in variety. Look at it this way. When you watch a choral performance, there are various types of voices we hear. Soprano, tenor, alto, and others. But when we listen to them singing all together, 
there is harmony. Different voices, but they are one. That's a perfect example of unity. Unity in art refers to the appearance or condition of oneness of an artwork. All the elements such as line, color, texture, and others belong together that result in having a coherent and harmonious whole. As variety provides diversity, yet it acts as a counterbalance to the extreme unity. Look at these examples from Jacob Lawrence. What do you notice? Each artwork has plenty of colors mixed up, as well as patterns, but it all looks cohesive. The visual themes were established with the use of lines, shapes, and colors. The many figures and the objects and the complex compositions of Lawrence formed a unified design through the artist's skillful use of abstraction, theme, and variation. Next is balance. When you're riding a bike, balance is the key element to keep you moving and to avoid accidents. In art, balance is the condition in which acting influences are held in check by opposing forces or what is in the left side should appear on the right side. Also in order to achieve equilibrium, the near or exact matching of left and right sides of the three-dimensional form or a two-dimensional composition is called symmetrical balance. The two sides which are not the same is asymmetrical balance. Look at these examples. In this image, you can see all the sides are in an exact match. This has symmetrical balance. Well, in this one, you can see that both sides are not the same. Therefore, this one has asymmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance can be seen on the wheels of the chariot in Giacometti's work in bronze, where there is a slim figure that serves as a vertical line attached on an elevation. On the other hand, in Haranobu's figure on a woodblock print, asymmetrical balance was achieved with one figure sitting and the other standing. Third is emphasis in subordination. When we are telling a story to other people, we tend to give emphasis on the key parts of our story. That way, the listeners will focus on the important information. When it comes to art, to draw our attention to an area or areas, the artist uses emphasis. To create emphasis, position, contrast, color intensity, and size can all be used. Neutral areas of lesser interest are created by the artist through subordination to keep us from being distracted from the areas of emphasis. In other words, the artist wants us to focus on a certain area in the image. Just like in this artwork of Joseph Mallard William Turner entitled Yacht Approaching the Coast. He wants to draw our attention to the yacht because it is the main subject of the image. That's why there were more details on that area of the painting. Next one is contrast. The juxtaposition of strongly dissimilar elements is called contrast. Dark set against light, large against small, bright colors against dull are examples of contrasts. Visual experience becomes monotonous without contrast. Contrast can be seen also in the thick and thin areas of a single brush stroke. And this luster-painted bowl is a perfect example of that. Then we have repetition and rhythm. When we listen to music, we tend to remember the songs which have repetitive lyrics and melody. In art, the repetition of visual elements gives a composition of unity, continuity, flow, and emphasis. 
Rhythm is not only found in music. Rhythm in the visual art is created through the regular recurrence of elements with related variations. Not an exact copy, but with uncanny similarity to one another. Just as in this Buddhist mandala called the Womb Realm from the 9th century, the pattern emphasizes the unity of purpose shared by these thousands of figures, each an embodiment of the ideal of compassion. The last principle is scale and proportion. When you're writing an essay, you have to make sure that the idea of each paragraph is somehow connected to the other paragraphs in the essay. That's also how it is in art. Scale is the relation of one thing to another. It is one of the first decisions an artist makes when planning a work of art. Proportion is the size relationship of parts to a whole. Look at this artwork from Jose Clemente Orozco. The artist made sure that the size relationship of the different elements in the image is proportioned to one another. Speaking of elements, that is the next topic that we are going to talk about. The elements of art. The elements of art are its qualities or properties. And these seven elements are line, shape, space, value, color, texture, and perspective. Let's discuss each one starting with line. Line is our basic means for recording and symbolizing ideas observations, and feelings. It is a primary means of visual communication. Lines always have direction. They are always active. Lines have different variations, and these are the following. Actual line. Implied line and implied curved line. Actual straight line and implied curved line. Line created by an edge. Vertical line or attitude of alert attention. Horizontal line or attitude of rest. Diagonal lines or slow action and fast action. Sharp jagged lines. Dance of curving lines, hard line and soft line, ragged irregular line. The second element is shape. Shape refers to the expanse within the outline of a two-dimensional area or within the outer boundaries of a three-dimensional object. It may be geometric, which tends to be precise or regular like circles, triangles, squares. Just like this tablet, it's a rectangle. Or this compact powder, which is a perfect circle. On the other hand, organic shapes are irregular, often curving or rounded, and seem relaxed and more informal. Most common shapes in a human-made world are geometric, while most shapes in nature are organic. Just like this leaf, we cannot really tell what shape this is, can we? Moving on. Mass is a physical bulk of a solid body material, and it has a three-dimensional area. This example from Henry Moore is considered as mass in three dimension since it is a sculpture, while this one from Pablo Picasso is mass in two dimension because it's on paper. Third element is space. Space in a work of art refers to a feeling of depth or three dimensions. It can also refer to the artist's use of the area within the picture plane. The area around the primary objects in a work of art is known as negative space, while the space occupied by the primary objects is known as positive space. These are the diagrams of clues to spatial depth in two-dimensional surface. Overlap, 
overlap and diminishing size, vertical placement, overlap, vertical placement, and diminishing size. The next element is value. Value refers to the lightness and darkness of surfaces. It ranges from white to various grays to black. It can be a property of color or an element-independent color. Chiaroscuro is the use of radiations of light and shade, in which the forms are revealed by the subtle shifting from light to dark areas. This technique was developed during the Renaissance period to create illusion that figures and objects depicted on a flat surface appear as they do in the natural light conditions. Color is the fifth element. It is a component of light, affects us directly by modifying our thoughts, moods, actions, and even our health. Color exists only in light. But light itself seems colorless to the human eye. The so-called color is the effect on our eyes of light waves of differing wavelengths or frequencies. Color has three properties. First one is hue, which includes primary hues like red, yellow, and blue. Secondary hues consist of orange, green, and violet, while the intermediate hues are located between the primary and the secondary hues of which they are composed. Second color property is value, which refers to the relative lightness and darkness from white through grays and black. Third and last property of color is intensity also called a saturation. It refers to the purity of a hue or color. The pure hue is the most intense form of a given color. The hue at its highest saturation and the hue in its brightest form. The sixth element of art is called texture. The textile qualities of surfaces or to the visual representation of those qualities is referred to as texture. In visual arts, actual textures are those we can feel by touching. Simulated textures are those created to look like something other than plain on a plain flat surface. Painters stimulate texture, while sculptors and architects make use of actual texture. The last element is perspective. Perspective is point of view. In visual arts, it can refer to any means of representing three-dimensional objects in space on a two-dimensional surface, meaning a flat surface. It is a system designed to depict the way objects in space appear to the eye. In linear perspective, Objects appear smaller at a distance because parallel lines appear to converge as they recede into the distance. And the last meeting of the lines on the horizon is called the vanishing point. Now that you've learned the principles of design and refreshed your memory about the elements of art, let's check how far you've done with it. Get a pen and a piece of paper and let's do an activity. I want you to evaluate the following designs and try to see what elements of art are applied. You have five seconds to write down your answers. Ready? Here's the first image. Time. The correct answer is line. Number two. The correct answer is perspective. Number three. All right, what's the answer? Yes, it's color. Number four. Time 
is up? The answer is texture. Number five. The answer is line. Number six. The correct answer is perspective. Last number, number seven. If the answer is texture. Great job, everyone! I hope you all had fun while learning today. But before we part ways, I'd like to give you a homework to further test your learnings from today's lesson. On page 17 of your learning module, you will find an activity entitled, Let's Dig More. You will see this picture there, and you will have to copy the design and draw it on a piece of paper using a pencil. That's it for today. Don't forget to explore your creativity and remember to create art from the heart. This has been Teacher Pao and I'll see you again soon only here at DevEd TV.